Welcome to a new daily top ask Reddit video. Today's topic. What video game caused you the most amount of rage? Overwatch. It's like playing a game of soccer where everyone on your team wants to be striker and charges for the ball at the same time leaving the goals wide open. Then they lose and bitch about no one being keeper. You've just described Rocket League, and that's even more like soccer. Loilo Rocket League is exactly like youth soccer. Every player really wants to hit the ball. They don't give a shit how they do it, or where the ball goes they just all know that they must hit the ball by any means necessary. I'll repeat it as often as it needs to be said, Overwatch is a social experiment designed to figure out how quickly six perfect strangers can develop cabin fever. Honestly, it's the matchmaker. So many people who play Overwatch say I don't believe in the enforced 50% win forward slash lose ratio, and they are technically correct, somewhat. What happens is, each player has a shown rating, and a hidden MMR rating. The matchmaker tries to make games balanced, but it has to get people from within the range of the shown rating. Meanwhile, it's actually matching people based on the hidden rating. What that does in practical application is, people who have done better in their most recent games get put with people who have done worse. Your shown rating is equivalent to the other teams, but the hidden rating varies by quite a lot. That's why Overwatch is so tilting. The more sweaty and try hard you are, the worse teammates you get put with. I can't tell you how many people I ran into who went I finally climbed when I stopped trying to carry. I.e. they just made those decisions to make plays at key moments in a match rather than driving themselves crazy trying to carry an entire team of dead weight. Back in the day, my NES controller had bite marks in it because I didn't know you could save your general progress in Kid Icarus by writing down this code that appeared after you died, yet I was determined to beat the game. I would spend hours making it to the end, only to die and be reset to the beginning of the game. This caused my 12-year-old brain to become flooded with the rage of a zombie horde and so I would sink my teeth deep into the flesh of the controller until the darkens would subside. Edit, holy shit, guess I wasn't the only one. Edit, thanks for the awards guys, next time send cash. Modern children will never know the pain of not being able to look simple things up on the internet. I'll make my children go offline whenever I need to call someone. For honor for sure, no game has taken me to the same level of pure anger. Or Rocky spams light and runs away. I need therapy after reading this comment. Rainbow Six Siege. Where the fuck did he shoot me from? Tom Clancy's how the fuck was that not a headshot? Tom Clancy's how much health does a fucking 3 speed have? Rocket League. After 2500 hours it's more rage than fun and I should stop playing. This game is the very reason I posted this question. I only have about 100 H. Never encountered such a toxic community. It's really bad. Change your chat to quick chat only, at least this helps against verbal toxicity. Or, if you don't mind being called words, I bait them into saying something the Autobus system detects. Then I report them. Always gets them banned. I played several hundred hours without even realizing you could play competitive ranked matches without Rocket Pass. I basically thought you had to pay for Rocket Pass to play ranked. I thoroughly enjoyed the game up to this point and rarely had toxic experiences. Then I found out about ranked. I played competitive and lasted about a week before quitting the game completely. Haven't played in months and don't plan to. I even played console so I didn't encounter many players with keyboards so rarely did I get chat other than the presets. I'd never thought something so simple as what a save, or nice shot would send me over the edge. I'm 40 years old and one of the calmest people ever. Trying to explain the toxicity to someone who has never played is actually kind of comical. My non-gaming friends are like so you quit a game you loved because people would tell you nice shot when you missed. My non-gaming friends are like so you quit a game you loved because people would tell you nice shot when you missed. LMAO. Edit, why the hell did this get over 2000 upvotties? Echo the Dolphin. I consider it one of my favorite games but the difficulty curve is super wonky. The lagoon was the third level and by far one of the most difficult ones in the entire game. I owned this game for years and never got off the first screen. I thought the whole game was just swimming around in that little cove. I was a stupid kid. Dude, fucking same. I swam around and around trying to find something, anything. I thought it was just broken. This is the first time hearing that it's an actual game and not a dolphin swimming simulator. 
I could never get past the stupid octopus right at the beginning. Swim slowly past eight arms. Worst thing is the octopus appears again in the lagoon. XCOM Critical tactical situation, life and death, 99% chance to hit. Swing and a miss. I love the game and fucking hate it. Three inches from alien while hold org a shotgun. Miss. And in this case the alien is a 10 foot tall roided up juggernaut that takes up his entire field of vision. Removed. My favorite Steam review of all time is the guy who said there's a 99% chance he would recommend the game, and then gave it a thumbs down. Most of online PvP game, because my internet connection is a shit. Can't be worse THSN mine, I play every game on 180 plus ping, got used to it cause no one cares about my country. Edit, I live in South Africa, I play Valorant, Modern Warfare, Overwatch and others on 180 to 200 ping, some games like Dota and Siege have gotten SAS servers but you get used to the high ping. Mine is 80 on a good day but regularly hits 200 to 300 with spikes up to 2000 mis. Aladdin where you gotta go through the lava cave on the rug. And Lion King. Fuck the Harkyo Matata waterfall. That's what I've been waiting to read. That level can only be described in UK English as cuntish. My best friend's little brother had memeized this level, and kids from the block would have Mike beat it for them. We'd be hanging out and some kid would knock on the door and ask Mike to come do the lava cave. I still remember that, almost 30 years later. Cuphead. R.I.P. My controller. That fucking dragon took years off my life. The first time I played Cuphead, it was on my old laptop, which ran every boss fight perfectly fine except good ol' matchstick. As soon as he brought out his other two heads, my game would lag so badly and go down to about 10 FPS. Beating him at that frame rate with one heart left is still one of my biggest gaming accomplishments ever. Battletoads Level 3 I am 37 and I still am not over that level. Edit, wow, thank you all for the awards kind strangers. To know that level 3 proved to be a Sisyphean task for so many is a cathartic release. Look at this badass over here, getting to level 3. And honestly there are worse levels. Getting over it. If you don't have that golden pot, then you haven't gotten over Bennett Foddy. I oddly find getting over it extremely relaxing, and find myself laughing more than raging when I fall 1000 feet. Are you a demo? I never hated a game, myself, or the people around me more than the one time I played Overcooked. My entire family played Overcooked one time and we were advancing really quickly, we were on this arctic map I think and I accidentally pushed my mom into a pool of water while she was delivering the last meal we needed to win the level. We failed. I never thought a rocking pirate ship could cause so much anxiety and hate. I had to ban my wife from playing it with our, then, 8 and 10 year olds. Man expecting a 10 year old not to make a game out of just punching the rat and expecting an 8 year old to not have the priorities RTO skills to get overloaded and occasionally stand in the way you would have thought someone colored on the walls and tie dyed the dogs. Yeah we haven't played it in a long time. Not even out of quarantine desperation. Sonic 3 The Carnival Night Barrel The maddening thing about it is that it's so easy to get past once you know the bullshit method of doing it. See, you've just got to understand that Sonic can generate more vertical force by looking up and down than he can by actually jumping on something. Apparently. It's the sort of trap that simply wouldn't work today. Everyone would just Google it. Still, at least the game had a save feature. Some PC baseball game I bought at the Scholastic Book Fair in the IATs. It booted out of DOS. I must have just been too young or accidentally set the difficulty too high but I literally couldn't get a hit. I ended up crying and throwing the game away. Edit, I tried finding it, I think it was hardball for. At least you got that toxicity out of your life. Y'all better not be talking shit on backyard baseball. Man, I loved working on that game, I still have my custom Pablo Bat the studio gave to employees, the other backyard sports series, and the junior. Adventure games too. Humongous Entertainment was a great place to work at the time. Edit, added Bat pick link by request. Not included is other he forward slash cave dog good swag like the pajama sum lunchbox, total annihilation box, and other stuff in the attic. httpsimga.com forward slash bvgs3t4 Guitar Hero 2 Expert Playthrough 
just the song Freya. My pre-teenage hands were just too small to be able to consistently hold the go button and have to stretch to the orange. On the plus side I did feel like a rock star smashing the guitar. That song is the most cramp-producing song ever. Fucky jam, though. The Sword is a kick-ass band. Ever play the game Black and White, where you play a god? My younger brother was an evil god who demanded human sacrifices and took ever other settlements by force. Eventually the ground cracked and lava spewed wherever his cursor was. I was a benevolent god who cared for my people and took over other settlements by making mine so nice the other populations all moved there. Flowers sprouted wherever I had my cursor. So anyway my brother completed the game and I couldn't because eventually my settlements would get destroyed by the game antagonist while I was busy building my people libraries. Even tried again as an adult and couldn't complete the game. I think I'm gonna die mad about it. Edit, I messaged my brother to let him know I'm still mad about this, and now he's telling me how annoying I was when I played Skyrim. Apparently it was frustrating for him that I cared more about adopting orphans than I did killing dragons. Edit 2, thank you for the award. Now I'll have to tell my brother I got a gold for this. Edit 3 because damn all of you. HTTPSU2.BE forward slash Q0X4KW underscore Y4FG. Apparently it was frustrating for him that I cared more about adopting orphans than I did killing dragons. My favorite part of Skyrim is returning home at 3am after assassinating the Emperor of Tamriel, only to hear, did you get me anything? It's 3 in the morning go the fuck to bed. I mean, you could have at least brought them a souvenir. Funny because I had no issues, but I was on the fence kind of god. I would help them, but occasionally throw a couple out to the ocean so they remember who's boss.